I'm Max Palmer. I'm an associate professor of political science, and I'm talking about how affordable housing can exclude. We talk about affordable housing in lots of different ways, about um, building units to hopefully drive down prices, about subsidized housing, uh, sometimes as a tactic when arguing about what kinds of housing we should build. Here I'm going to talk about affordable housing as subsidized housing, where the rents are below market rate because of federal, state, local government programs to reduce them. And in Massachusetts, we have very little data about our subsidized housing stock. And the state, in fact, only tracks the total number of units in every city and town. And as we see here, the most expensive towns, whether measuring by housing price or income or other demographics like that, have a much smaller share of subsidized housing. And this is a big contributor to the housing crisis because in Weston and Nantucket and Wellesley and the most expensive towns, people who work in those towns often can't afford to live there. We partnered with Housing Navigator, which is a nonprofit in Massachusetts that's trying to make data on subsidized housing a lot more available. And their goal is to make it easier for people who are looking for this housing to find it. It's sort of like a Zillow for subsidized housing. And they have a lot more data on what all these units look like and how they break down. And so we're able to decompose this sort of total housing stock across some different variables. For example, we find that 40% of all the, house, all the subsidized housing units in the state have age restrictions. They're reserved for seniors. Uh, another 40% have two or more bedrooms. They might be appropriate for families. And then only 23% are one bedroom or smaller units for one or two people. We can also break these down even further by different kinds of rent programs. And so percent of income means the rent on these units are based on what you as a household earn. So they're affordable to everybody. Um, and the less you make, the cheaper your rent will be. So those are the most affordable kinds of housing units. On the other hand, there's also below market units where the rents are based on the area median income. And that means they might be affordable to people who can already afford to live in that town, maybe below median income for that town, but might not be affordable to many other people who might want to move to that place. And so we see here on the left, the vast majority of senior housing units have that most affordable kind of subsidy. But as we move across to family units and then for one or two people, that subsidy is less common, less frequent. Why do we see so much senior housing in Massachusetts? And it's far out of proportion to the percent of people uh, living below the poverty level or of low income people in the state. Why so much of it? We see a lot of different reasons. One is that when developers propose building family subsidized housing, often cities and towns push back. They say, we don't want more of this housing in our town because it will affect the school capacity or our school budgets. Or there's a belief that, it caught, that families create more traffic than senior citizens. Um, but it's also one mechanism is that often there's a, cities and towns want housing for seniors who currently live there to be able to downsize as their incomes decrease and to age in place. And what that does is that benefits current residents who might be well off in some of these towns, and, but excludes anybody else who wants to move. So for example, we find a very sharp relationship between the demographics of the town um, and the percent of units reserved for seniors. There's 44 cities and towns in the state where 100% of their affordable housing or subsidized housing units are reserved for seniors, and they're among the whitest cities and towns uh, in the state, including Milton, currently in trouble with the state uh, for rejecting the MBTA community's law. Thank you.